Ready? Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, good morning, dear YouTubers, and welcome to our webinar with Professor Maria Leira. So, we're going to be talking today about uh, pronunciation tools and technology. I mean, for learners and teachers, and Professor Leira has consented to be with us today. Professor Mary, it's uh, one of the greatest professors I have ever met. She has 25 years of experience in teaching pronunciation in Venezuela at university level. And she has consented to be with us today to help us and to reach our community with this matter. Mary also has been uh, working with different uh, organizations around the world. She used to be Van Tissel's president and now she's working for Tissel International as well. And we're very happy to have Mary with us today. Mary, welcome to our webinar this morning. Thank you very much. It's an honor to be here with you and to see how, I mean, how much you have grown the last years. I mean, Johannes was my, my student and also my assistant, and now he's my colleague and he knows as much as I know. So uh, this is more than a presentation. This is a meeting of friends and colleagues. So I feel very happy to be here and accompany all of you. Thank you very much for joining us today. As you know, as she said, my name is Johannes. Sorry, I didn't say it before. And this is Joel Blanco. And we're the directors of uh, the, uh, the Address Corner. So Mary, uh, mm, whenever you're ready, we can start. You can start sharing your screen. Uh, dear audience, uh, we're going to be taking, I mean, writing down your questions. I mean, from the chat or the, you, you leave there. But the questions we'll be taking care of at the end of the session, OK, at the end of the webinar. But don't worry, your questions will be answered. We're going to be taking care of them. So Mary, whenever you're ready, you can share and we can start. OK, I, I, I want also to ask the, the, the attendees if they have any question, I mean, while in the presentation, that is very, very important. I mean, so I can stop a little bit and, and explain or, or answer. Uh, but I, I, I would rather, uh, I mean, prefer to answer at the end. Uh, anyways, I have questions during the presentation, so I would like to interact with uh, the participants as well, if, if it is possible. Um, okay, Great. I'm going to start right now then. Okay, can you see my presentation? Yep. Okay, so good. So far, so good. Um, I need to close this or this in here. I don't know. Let me put it somewhere that doesn't bothers. It's 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 okay, Mary. It's it's okay. Okay. People I'll will leave. only see you talking, and so the the the, the window okay. it's very small. Okay. So good. So as you see here, uh, my pronunciate my my presentation is is called pronunciation, teaching and learning using technology tools. And uh, you know how difficult it is for some people, I mean, to learn pronunciation and for teaching pronunciation. I mean, it is not easy to tackle. I mean, or some people think it is, it is not easy to tackle pronunciation. And in a certain way, uh, teachers and learners uh, try to avoid uh, learning, learning it, okay? And, uh, but it is not a big deal. And uh, I would like to show you something. And after you see these, the following video, I would like you to ask me a question, uh, to answer a question. And here we have, this is a video. Um, this is a famous comedian called, uh, was a famous comedian called Lucille Ball. And uh, this is one of her, her programs with her, her ex-husband. And uh, I would like you to pay attention to their pronunciation and the mistakes they make, uh, uh, they make in the in the in the interaction, and I will ask you later which the words and the and the pronunciation mistakes are, and I would like you to tell me as well uh, why those those mistakes. Okay, so here it goes. Here, honey, I'll show you uh, them talking. Which are the mistakes that these men? Uh, did in the presentation. You know? Do you, do you pay attention? Okay, so yeah. I need you to think a little bit. Why do you think he has those mistakes? So here you have the words, the mispronounced words in the video. So you have bows, rough, through, cough, 
enough. Aha, uh -huh. and you see here this, the same spelling in all the words, the O and the U, and you see the vowel sounds we have here, they are all different. Only these two words, rough and enough, have the same vocalic sound for the O-U spelling. And my question is, why do you think this man has these uh, uh, mistakes, these pronunciation mistakes? So uh, if, if uh, my friends from the other uh, corner, if they see the chat, they may see what people say and they, they can tell me. Why do you think people have these mistakes? Well, um, Mary, they're just placing here. I mean, when, where you were asking about the words, they placed the words there. Okay. And, and uh, they highlighted the, I'm happy the spellings. Of it. Yeah, the spellings that you were mentioning, they highlighted it. Okay, so good. Uh -huh. But why people have these type of mistakes? This is not, I mean, these mistakes do not only belong to these men. I mean, this is very common to learners of English as a second language, as a foreign language. Why are they so, I mean, so popular? I mean, people uh, uh, repeat them a lot. And not only with these spelling uh, uh, or these uh, uh, letters uh, combinations, it's, it's with uh, many other combinations of letters or with different uh, other letters. What do you think? Uh, there is one person in the audience, Mary, saying that English is a phonetically inconsistent language. Uh-huh. Inconsistent, inconsistent in what, in which way? So the spelling does not correspond with the pronunciation, right? Mm -hmm. The yes. morpheme and the phoneme do not coincide in English, uh, which is different uh, uh, to other languages. So this is one, I mean, one reason why we need to teach pronunciation in the English classroom, and this is a reason for all learners to emphasize learning pronunciation. I mean, I, I understand that people can have their own identities because of their own language, their own mother tongue. But what is not permissible is to have a wrong pronunciation. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so you can see here that my purpose today, my agenda is to talk about pronunciation websites and to talk about pronunciation apps and why I'm going to talk about these two topics. Because, I mean, now that we are, many of us uh, are at home and uh, I mean, it, or, or if we go out, I mean, it is, we have certain limitations and um, we have time to be at home and teach from home or to learn from home using your your own uh, uh, sm uh, smartphone or using your laptop, your computer. And uh, we're gonna start now seeing the different pronunciation websites. And uh, we start with this one, Youglish, okay? This uh, website is about, I mean, it, it provides real life situations, okay? Cases, uh, giving you videos, etc. In, in, in which you can interact and you can learn the pronunciation. Okay, so here you have, um, you type the language, okay? You click the language you want to learn, in this case is English. So you see that you have uh, many other languages you can learn through these, uh, uh, these sites. And when we talk about English, you can see that it provides uh, American pronunciation, British pronunciation, and Australian pronunciation. Okay, so when we click, we see that it provides phonetic uh, information about using modern IPA or English phonetic alphabet, using the traditional uh, uh, IPA. Okay, we have a new uh, um, uh, alphabet with different symbols, some different symbols, not many. And they also provide a traditional IPA for those who know the existing traditional IPA and also provide, provides the pronunciation of the syllables of the words you, uh, um, you are looking for. Um, it also provides tips to improve your pronunciation. So it tells you, for example, to break uh, the, the word into syllables or to record yourself or to look up tutorials on YouTube or to focus on one accent. 
which is very important. I mean, you, I mean, a mixture of accents is, is not uh, convenient. It's, uh, it depends. I mean, you choose one. I mean, uh, you choose general American, or you can choose the received pronunciation, or is it is Australian pronunciation or Canadian pronunciation. But you need to choose only one, and not to be, you know, wondering and 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 not knowing uh, what you are you are pronouncing. So then we have another one that is voice tube. Voice tube have channels. So you can, so through these uh, website called VoiceTube, you can go to different channels for speech, uh, speeches and presentation, educational animations, the BBC, uh, you, you look for movies, TV, music, everything for learning pronunciation, okay? So uh, here you can click on the level you are, you can be A1, basic, intermediate, advanced level, etc. cetera. Um, so here you can see that they provide um, they provide a, a video, okay, uh, with a sentence that is called today's sentence that you can see here, okay. So this is the sentence that is going to be pronounced in this video, and they also provide key vocabulary that you're gonna hear that is part of the the, the today's sentence. And they provide also the pronunciation. If you click, you're going to hear it. And you also have the uh, uh, transcription of it. OK. And you have the video. You play the video. And after you play the video, you can also uh, use your microphone and record yourself and hear your pronunciation and compare it with the one in the video. OK. OK. This, is, this was a voice tube because they use uh, videos from YouTube. Okay, so here you see in this part, you see your recording and uh, uh, you hear also the, 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 the video and you, you can go slower or to a normal speed as well. Okay, so the next one is called How to Pronounce. This is another website. Um, I like it. I mean, it is only it is a dictionary. Okay, first of all, it is a pronunciation dictionary. Here you 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 can type the word you're looking for, and here you type the language you are you're working with. In this case, is English. All right, then you click here, and you see in the next page you see different words associated with the word you were looking for. In my case, I was looking for the word webinar. So you see informational webinar, webinar from, um, I mean, different uh, email addresses, and et cetera. So they provide the pronunciation of all that. So um, in here, you go and they give you the pronunciation using the IPA alphabet. Mm -hmm. You can uh, record your voice in this part. Okay, record your pronunciation and your voice. Um, and uh, later here, you, you, this is a practice mode. You can, you can repeat as many times as, as you wish the, the word you're looking for. This is the button you, you press in order to uh, pronounce. Here you see uh, your um, pronunciation and you can play again, you can rec record again, and you can contribute with the website, leaving your, uh, your pronunciation in the website. So other people who come here, or the community comes here and see what, I mean, your pronunciation as well. Okay, so far so good, no questions so far? No, uh, no questions so far. Uh, there was also, I mean, but there is a, a comment there from, uh, let me see the name of the person, it's called Grazia Mendoza, she says that, and it's regular for us as teachers to neglect pronunciation. I mean, it's left out sometimes as a sub skill, skill and it should not be like that when you're teaching English. Yeah, so. mm -hmm. yeah, I agree with Grazia. Hello, Grazia, I know her. Um, and she's part of, of the TESOL International Association. She's one of the board members, by the way. Uh, thank you, Grazia, for your opinion. It is True. I mean, not everybody likes working with pronunciation and many, many people look for help in order to, um, to know how to teach it, how to tackle this. Okay, so I continue and, and you see this, that is phonetizer. Okay, phonetizer is also, uh, I mean, you, you, you are looking for transcription and pronunciation. So you see here that it provides British pronunciation and American pronunciation as well. 
And here you can type either a single word or you can type a short sentence. And in here you see, um, you, you click transcribe first and then you obtain the, the, the transcription. But in this case, you need to be uh, familiar with the IPA, okay? With the International Phonetic Alphabet or at least with one system of transcription. So you, hear, you, you can see here, I wrote a letter to my family. Well, letter, because this is British. And uh, in here where it says speak, when you click speak, you hear also the pronunciation. So you listen to the pronunciation. First you have input and then you have the output as well. So you can then uh, 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 pronounce and, and, and try to imitate that native-like pronunciation. So this is another tool uh, that you can use that is called phonetizer. Okay, we have another one very similar to phonetizer, but I love it a lot that is called text to phonetics. So in text to phonetics, I mean, it, it transcribes short English texts uh, into broad phonetic transcription. So it is the, the simplest, uh, uh, not, not the simplest, sorry, the, 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 the more uh, complex way of transcription uh, using the International Phonetic Alphabet or IPA, which is very similar to any other system of transcription, you know. So there are certain differences with the with the symbols, but at the end, it's easy for anybody. You don't need to have a, a great training to, uh, to understand uh, these symbols. So you see here that text to phonetics uh, works with two pronunciations, received pronunciation RP or general American pronunciation, the GA. Um, you here um, type, or paste your English text. And in here I typed, I have good news. So um, later, I mean, you can see how uh, it provides the output of the transcription. You have, I have good news. You see the transcription here. And uh, you can also customize the output transcription. So it depends of the, on, on how much information you need. Remember, this is, it provides broad transcription. So it tells you about syllabic consonants. It tells you, uh, it gives you certain marks, certain diacritics. If you don't need them, I mean, you don't need to, I mean, to use that. If you want slants instead of these bars here, for example, if you are more familiar with the slants, you use slants, et cetera. You can use the R sound that is more for American English than for uh, British English. Um, you can remove the stress. So these symbols here, you see, so you can remove them if you, if you wish, if, if they confuse you. But at least you get some, some input on how you're going to, to pronounce, okay? And you can work alone at home. And you can also, I mean, teachers can also uh, 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 share this with their students from home or in the classroom as well. One of my favorites, the University of Iowa Sounds of Speech. This is a great, great website that be became uh, also uh, an app. Okay, um, I have bad news about this website. It's going to disappear at the end of 2020 because it, will, it works with a Flash Player and uh, um, you're not going to see it anymore, but while it remains in the in the in the net, you can you can use it. So it is beautiful. You're going to see it. Many people know know it. I mean, people in my university where I worked for 25 years. I mean, they know about the University of Iowa uh, app that is called Sounds of Speech. This is the same name uh, for the app, and it provides the pronunciation for three different languages: English. German and Spanish. So if I click English, I find this page. So in here you have sounds of English, you have the consonantal sounds, you have the vocalic sounds, you have uh, the, the, the manners of articulations, the place of articulation, uh, the voicing quality of the consonants, the same for vowels, you have monophones and you have diphthongs, but let's see how it works. So here you have, 
Okay, what I already said about consonants and vowels. So I'm gonna show you how it works. I hope uh, you can listen uh, how it works. So you click stop, you, you click one of those sounds. You see the articulation. You see the lips. And it provides, I mean, three examples of the word. So in this case, you have the sound in initial position, the same sound in, in intermediate position, and the same sound in final position. So it is very explicit. You see how the lips here work, how, I mean, the villain is working in here, and, and, you, and you, you can click any sound uh, in this part of the site. I mean, you can also see these in the app called the same way, sounds of speech. And, um, okay. Okay, next one. This is another website called How, How You Say, How You Say. And How You Say is in a free online audio dictionary of English pronunciation. And it also provides definitions and translation, okay? So How You Say, you just type here the word you're looking for, okay? In my case, it was free. And you see here that you, you can find the pronunciation of the word. You just click here, you play it, and you hear the, these words in isolation or these words combined with other words like free of charge, free radical. It happens with any word you're looking for. I mean, it gives you the, the pronunciation of the word combined with other words, uh, compound words or phrases. And um, as I said, it provides a definition of the word you, if you click here, and it also provides a translation of the word. So you see, it is a dictionary and it is free and every, everybody can, uh, can have access to it. And in here you can see in this part that it also has uh, entries on the iPhone and on Android. So this is also an app you can find in your phone. Okay, so Let's start with the pronunciation apps. Uh, do you have any questions so far? Uh, no, Mary, they're just comments saying that the tools are great and uh, some people have, have never I mean, seen them before. And they're great. very grateful that you're sharing with them this information. Okay, so great. If you see them, but you really use it, okay? Because you as a learner or you as teachers have the responsibility to train yourself in order to, te to teach others. Remember, we are models for, for our students and we need to, uh, I mean, you need to learn how to pronounce correctly. And we need to make an effort. I mean, you don't need to ask someone else to a colleague, you can learn by yourself. And here I, I provide you some other uh, tools, the pronunciation apps. And uh, the first one I'm gonna show you is called Sound Pronunciation App. So these apps develop your pronunciation and speaking skills. Uh, you can learn the sounds of English by listening to recordings of each sound. Um, you can improve your overall comprehension by listening to sample words in context. And the best thing, it is free. And you, I mean, it is available on Android and, uh, and the App Store, the Google Play uh, Store and the Apps, uh, App Store. So here you see uh, a screenshot of the app. This is how it appears. It belongs to Macmillan uh, Publishing Company. And uh, so you see here, you have the chart, you, you, you have uh, some practice. Uh, you, there is, um, you can find a quiz, you can uh, uh, test yourself. So here you see that uh, you also have uh, a chart with the vocalic sounds, the, um, um, also the consonantal sounds here you type uh, the here you have this so you can you can type the different uh, phonetic symbols and this is the sound the pronunciation app that is free there is another app called learn english sound right and these app belongs to the british council very famous and it, it has i mean it, it, it is a, a very good evaluation on uh, Google Play and the App Store. Um, I mean, it, it provides listening and pronunciation training. Uh, 
Uh, it works with individual sounds and symbols. Um, it also has a phonemic chart where you have all the vowels, all the consonants, and the diphthongs of English. Of course, it, I mean, it has British pronunciation. Um, it contains this, this phonemic chart contains the pure vowels, uh, which are arranged in the same way as in the IPA chart. For those who are already familiar with the IPA chart, remember, so, I mean, these, uh, all these sounds, the, all the segmental sounds, the vocalic and the consonantal sounds are arranged according to the mouth shape, the mouth shaped left to right, according to the lips, if they are wide or round, according to, uh, I mean, if, if the tongue is at the top or, or at the bottom of the oral cavity, according to the jaw closure, so if it is closed or if it is open, when you pronounce the different sounds, um, and you can tap the bottom corners of these uh, of these phonemic chart of the of the sound you are looking for to hear sample words, which is great. You see, something that is great as well is that this app is completely free and very very useful. So you see that it is uh, also available on Google Play. At, at Google Play and App Store. And here you see the screenshot uh, of the British Council app that is called Learn English Sound Right. If you see here, the stars 4.8. So this is the punctuation for these app, which is really great. Okay, so there is another app that is called Say It, English pronunciation. And in this pronunciation, I mean, you also work with listening and pronunciation. It is impossible to learn to pronounce if you don't get the, I mean, you don't listen to the pronunciation first. You need to get the input first in order to imitate that input. It is impossible to, I mean, separate one thing from the other. Sometimes we can work with pronunciation having you know, the phonetic transcription and you read the phonetic transcription and then you can pronounce. But there are some other apps like this one, like the previous one from the British Council, Council that provides also the input of the pronunciation. It also works with audiovisual feedback. It works with more than 35,000 words. Um, it works only with 12 sounds, not all the sounds you saw before. Okay, not all the consonantal sounds, not all the vocalic sounds, works with only 12 sounds between vowels and, and diphthongs, all right? Um, it works with isolated, isolated uh, sounds, with isolated words or sentences. You can test yourself so you can hear your pronunciation. You can record that and, and, and also hear your pronunciation. You can share the recording with your teacher or your classmates, which is great, okay? So uh, it is free, okay? It has certain limitations, but if you go premium and you, and you pay a couple of dollars, $1 or $2, I mean, you can get the premium version and you have access to sharing your recording or testing yourself, et cetera. And it's also available in the Google Play and uh, the App Store. Okay, so here we see the Say It um, app. So this is a screenshot where you see, I mean, this is the, the audio visual uh, help that it provides, okay? The pronunciation and how, I mean, you record, etc. Okay, another app is simply called English pronunciation. And it also works with listening and pronunciation, which is great. We need to listen. I mean, having uh, the phonetic symbols is not enough. We need to hear also in order to, uh, to learn. I mean, not everybody learns from transcriptions, for, from the phonemic transcription. We need to listen sometimes and several times. So it works with uh, vowels and consonants, all the vowels and consonants. This is good. It also works with a super segmental aspect with stress and it provides nine stress rules. It also works with accent, North American accent, uh, British accent, Australian accent, all right? It works with the phonetic symbols, which is great. It's not only that you hear and you also pronounce, it also provides phonetic symbols 
Um, it gives you practical exercises. You have, uh, you can record yourself and you have self listening. You can, you can listen to what you say or your students can listen what they say. And the best thing, it is free and provides all these advantages. It is available in any of these stores, Google or App Store. And here you see a screenshot of the, uh, the app that is called English Pronunciation. So you see here that you also see the, the facial di diagram or the SAMI diagram or the sagittal section diagram. And you can also see the lips. So, uh, I mean, you have extra inputs. You have certain audiovisual aids apart from the listening input, apart from the, the, the pronunciation that you, you practice. You can also have uh, the visual um, of how the sound is pronounced and how you put your lips when you pronounce those sounds. Okay. The next app is called the American English Pronunciation app. And as you see here, it also works with listening and pronunciation. It works with the segmental aspects, vowels and consonants. It also works with stress and also provides nine stress rules, um, different accents. You can record yourself. It, it provides exercises and also works with Google and the App Store. And this is the American English pronunciation app. So here you see that you have the phonemic chart with the vocalic sounds in the upper part, the diphthongs in this part, in the lower part, you have the consonantal sounds. So you can see the transcription, the phonemic transcription while you play the sound or you play the word that you are uh, pronouncing. Uh, when you play the word, it gives you a result. So you see here the test results and it tells you, I mean, how, how good you were. I mean, comparing you or your pronunciation with a native-like pronunciation, uh, I mean, how similar you are. So in this case, you have 80% that telling you that you need already 20% in order to to have an, Amer um, uh, an American English pronunciation, okay? And this is only for American English, of course. Okay. And uh, uh, this is, uh, we find these on Chrome and you can install it in your computer. It is called Quick, Quick Talk and it's, uh, it's, it's free, of course, it has a free instant pronunciation. Um, so you just type in this area, the sound you're looking for, you instantly hear a word pronounced or you enter one word per entry. So you cannot, uh, you cannot use uh, phrases, but isolated words and you can hear the result. And it's easy uh, to have it because it's an extension on Google Chrome. Okay, and this is the, the Quick Talk uh, um, uh, extension that I already talked about. You have here in the uh, Chrome Web Store, you find it. Okay, okay. And uh, I left this up for the end of the presentation and it's my favorite app. I think I, we haven't seen something like this before. This is called Elsa, right, Elsa provides virtual pronunciation coaching, okay? What, what does it mean? Uh, that it tells you how good you pronounce and it corrects you. And if you need to pronounce or, or to repeat the word several times, you do it. I mean, these app receive uh, uh, different prizes from the app store in, in, in 2019 and 2020 as the best app of those years. So you have virtual pronunciation coach, you have that artificial intelligence technology working with Elsa. You, um, you can compare your pronunciation to a native speaker. You receive feedback to improve, great. If you don't have, you're, you're not with a teacher uh, because of, of the pandemic, you can work at home, this app corrects your pronunciation. You have all the English sounds 
it, uh, you can practice over 1,600 lessons. You have more than 40 topics from travel tips to job interviews. You have also an English dictionary and you have like two versions. You have the free version, all right? It has limitations and you have a pro version. I mean, you only pay uh, $1 or $1 and a half to have access to certain, uh, um, certain tools of these app and it is available uh, for Android and in the App Store, as you can see here. And I'm going to show you, uh, this is how, I mean, this is a screenshot from Elsa in the, in the, the you find in the, in the web. I'm going to show you here how it looks. This is a screenshot of the app on your phone, on your smartphone. So it tells you, you can improve, you can discover, you get accurate feedback and you can practice more than 1,600 uh, 1, words, okay? Or lessons, sorry. And I have these, rec these recordings here to show you. I, 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 I recorded the screens so you see what it has. So in here, you see all the conversations. I seriously. Sorry, this is, this is uh, how you work. So you click one of the daily conversations here. This is for level one. You click one of them and they give you like short conversations. First, you hear the interaction, the person, two people talking. And then you have the opportunity to record yourself and to hear yourself and then you receive feedback from Elsa telling you how good you were comparing your pronunciation with the pronunciation of a native speaker. Let me play it again so you see what I'm talking about. I seriously need a vacation. Me too. Is there some place you have in mind? So after you hear, you click here where you see the microphone, okay? and you record yourself. And then using this, you click here and you listen to your pronunciation and it will give you feedback, okay? In this part, in this side, I have another recording of the, the, of the screen. So you see the different sounds you work with. So you decide which combination of sounds you're, I mean, which minimal pairs you are using in, in the class or you're, you're, you're working because you, you know that you have certain weaknesses, for example, with a s and the z sound, which are counterparts. And for example, in this part, we see that this sound can also be uh, worked with the sh sound. All these sounds are fricative sounds, that s, the sh and the z. So you combine them. And if you decide to work with these sounds, you just click and you start, I mean, it provides you with the exercises you need. Let me, let me play it and let me show you, I mean, the different combinations, the different minimal pairs you work with, with Elsa. So here you see the ending sounds, the pa, the ta, the ka, the schwa, very important, the short E and the long E. So you hear, see the TH sound, the consonant clusters. You work with intonation as well, with vocalic sounds, with deep songs, with nasal sounds, and different fricative sounds, etc. So you here see the combinations and you just click here to find your level, the level in which you are. If you are a beginner, if you are an intermediate student, or if you are an advanced student. And this was Elsa, which is great. This is the, the one I love a lot. And um, okay, this, this is my last app. And I, I would like to show you the following video um, uh, because I'm ending my presentation. And I would like to show you again how important it is to learn pronunciation. I mean, it's not enough to work with the, with the, with the skill, with the speaking skill. I mean, you need to, to also to work with the sub skill, which is pronunciation. It's not enough to be fluent. There, you need to keep a balance between accuracy and fluency. Fluency is not enough. You need to be accurate as well. 
Maybe your pronunciation is not going to be like the one of a native speaker, but you need to improve your pronunciation because of what I said before. If you are going to be models for others, you need to be better than others. So you, you, you need to pronounce well. So you need to train yourself. So let me play this final video, very short video. And at the end, I'll give you a moral for this video. Das hier ist mein Sektor. Das hier ist das wichtigste Gerät des Küstenwächter. Das Gerät und das Gerät. Überlebensradar. Mayday, Mayday. Hello, can you hear us? Can you hear us? Can you... Okay, over. We are sinking. We are sink. Hello? This is the German Coast Guard. What are you thinking about? Okay, I hope you like the this video. So I give you my the moral for these, I mean, for this situation. Pronounce well, or your words could have serious consequences. And this is very, very important. Everybody pronounces well if you don't have to have a tragedy like the one in the video. Okay, thank you very much. It was my pleasure to be with you today and I hope you enjoyed my presentation. Mary, thank you very much. It's, I mean, the video was hilarious. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, yeah, it, it was hilarious. It was amazing. Uh, Mary, we have some questions here uh, okay. in mm -hmm. our chat box. The first question is from Andreina Diaz. She says, is there any app or website to practice uh, pronunciation that includes the practice of intonation? Oh, the one, the, the, the last one that I said, ELSA, yeah, is, a, is, a, is an app that works with intonation. I mean, not all the apps, I mean, you see there, I mean, uh, two of them all only work with stress, but the last one I mentioned works with intonation. But intonation is not that difficult. I would say intonation, is something that we can manage anyways. If you need it, ELSA is available. Great, great. Actually, intonation is one of the things that uh, that it's neglected when we learn from pronunciation, uh, mainly because of time. Not, if, yeah, maybe, but it, that you know why? The thing is that if you compare in, in our, I mean, where we learn uh, in pronunciation, I mean, intonation is very similar. For, uh, the one from Spanish and the one from English is not, that different. So that's why we leave it uh, uh, for the end of the classes. And, and sometimes we, don't, we didn't have time to, to study intonation. Uh, we, we didn't do it because it, it wasn't a big deal. So we prefer to focus on what it, what it really is important or what is more uh, uh, different. In this case, the vocalic sounds, which are terrible for any learner of, 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 of any uh, first language. Uh, there is another question here, Mary, it says, Lester Luna, said, is it recommended to teach kids IPA, I mean, phonics? No, 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 no. This, this, this training is, is for adults, right? For maybe for adolescents, maybe for adults, but not for kids. Remember that we use phonics, okay? Uh, for teaching um, elementary students and, and stuff like that. I mean, you, you, don't, you don't use uh, this, this type of, of, of um, websites or we, we, this type of, of teaching for for kids. This, that's another world, and that's another way of of, of 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 you know of teaching pronunciation. That's different. Uh, okay, uh, <clears throat> there are many people here saying thank you very much for sharing this. <clears throat> what you're sharing with us today, Mary, and says thank you. We loved it. We loved it. Thank you very much. Thank you for sharing the apps and the websites. One, maybe we can have one last question. You, you were saying that we can improve ourselves by using these resources, and it's true. But how, as teachers, can we implement it? Like, we give them this tool to the students just like for them to practice at home and to improve by themselves, or can we design any activity using this that we can track, you know, like a progress or improvements? It can be both. It can be both. I mean, if you're at home and you're not teaching in, in this moment, are you, I mean, you can um, tell your students to work by themselves, not giving them an assignment, but 
telling them that these are good tools for them to improve at home and things like that. And, and if you're working from home or you are working um, online, I mean, you can also uh, share uh, activities and you, you, you can uh, tell your students to work with certain particular lesson that appears in, in, a, in, a, in a particular website or in the app you're working with. So it is both sides. I mean, it, I mean, your students can work alone. And remember, we need to give students their own responsibility to learn. They are not babies. We're working with adults mainly when we work with these with these uh, websites and we uh, with with the apps. We need to give them the responsibility of learning by themselves as well, and and to monitor themselves because. We don't know how things change. And in this moment that we have this pandemic worldwide, that we are not with our students and we cannot help them. I mean, we need to, they need to rely on something else. And these tools are for them to rely on, on them. Okay. Yeah, there is, there are two more questions here, Mary. Uh, yes. Grazia asks, uh, what advice can be given to novice teachers so they place pronunciation at the forefront of their teaching? I mean, someone that has not, I mean, for example, the years of experience you have, or we may have, for example. First thing, I mean, to try to feel comfortable with teaching pronunciation. That's the, the main problem we have. I mean, uh, teachers think that teaching a language is only teaching grammar, vocabulary, and um, <clears throat> to speak, to listen, to write, to read, but they forget about pronunciation. They, they, they think this is, I mean, people think that this is the Cinderella of English teaching, right? Or the teaching of any language because pronunciation is, you know, <clears throat> it's like chemistry or physics or something very difficult that you cannot, you know, hold with your hands. But I mean, <laughs> in our context, we need to learn. We need to remember that we are models for our students and we need to learn how to Pronounce well first. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, there is another question here, Mary. Um, Alberto Molero uh, is asking if we incorporate pronunciation into our lessons, what kind of pronunciation topics should we teach first? Should we be uh, should we base it on a student's needs? Well, first of all, yes, of course. Any any kind of teaching, not only pronunciation teaching, is based on the student's needs. First of all. And if you don't have time to test your students' needs, know something. The first thing you need to teach is the pronunciation of the vocalic sounds. The vocalic sounds in English are around, is between 12 and 15, depending on the accent we're talking about, general American accent or British accent, Australian accent. The Australian accent has more vowels than the vowels used in American accent or the British accent. So we need to focus, first of all, vocalic sounds. In order to impede fossilization, that is, you know, to get that wrong pronunciation and continue producing the wrong sound for a long time. So we need to tackle, first of all, that would be like emergency vocalic sounds. After your students learn the vocalic sounds and you don't need to teach all of them, only the, the vocalic sounds that are different from your mother tongue, depending on, on your mother tongue. So you, you, you make a, like a contrastive analysis there and you choose the vocalic sounds you need to teach because there are other vocalic sounds you don't need to teach in a class. You don't need to be a pronunciation teacher like me in order to teach any English teacher can teach pronunciation little little parts of the class uh, only for pronunciation, but little parts teaching, for example, the the schwa, which is the most common sound in English. That's the first thing you teach. First thing. It appears everywhere in initial position, in media position, in final position, okay, of unstressed syllables. So first thing to tackle the, uh, um, um, the vocalic sounds, the vocalic, uh, the diphthongs as well, and then the consonants, but not all the 24 consonantal sounds, only the consonantal sounds that may cause problems with the pronunciation if you compare it with the mother tongue of the student. That's all. Well, Mary, thank you very much for enlightening us with that information. Um, uh, 
there are some other comments here, no more questions saying thank you very much. Thank you for sharing this. And something very important that you were mentioning and you mentioned a word or a phrase that it's common. I mean, the Cinderella of English. It is. M most of teachers do not like teaching mm -hmm. pronunciation. They think they cannot handle it. They think it, they think about it like, as you said, physics or chemistry or whatever, or quantics. Uh, yeah. yeah, but uh, it is actually achievable. And I mean, it's if you have a great instructor, good. And also now, as Mary was saying, there are so many things, some apps or resources you can use to improve your pronunciation. I mean, exactly. to get better and better. Which is what a she was presenting. A novel teacher needs to improve. A novel teacher needs to improve the pronunciation. I mean, it's your responsibility. I mean, maybe you, you, you left your university, you are already a teacher, great, you are a professional, but professional, professionalism also means that you improve with the time. You, you get a better professional each time. And pronunciation is something that I bet you have problems with when you are a novel teacher. So you have all these tools. I mean, you don't need to be a pronunciation teacher like me. You can train yourself. And if you don't do it, it is your fault. If your students may laugh, laugh at you in the class because you don't pronounce well, because students really, I mean, they really recognize when you don't have a, a good pronunciation. I'm not talking about accent, okay? I respect accents, the Venezuelan English accent or the Indian English accent, etc. I'm talking about pronouncing well to be accurate. That's what I'm talking about. I was I was gonna I was gonna launch that on you like how about accents? I mean, can we be still intelligible and have accuracy? Uh, having accent, Mary, like I mean, is something that we cannot get rid of it. How is the whole thing? Remember what intelligibility is. Intelligibility is the capacity to be understood. It is, I mean, don't go to the extremes. You, you have to be understood by others, but you need to be accurate, as I say. It is not that we're, um, we're talking about any, 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 any learner of pronunciation. In this case, we're talking about the teachers and teachers need to be accurate as well. The intel intelligibility concept is not for the teachers of the language, it's for other learners, learners who have other purposes. Okay, not for us, we need to be accurate. And there must be a balance between accuracy and fluency. It was first said in the 80s, last, uh, last uh, century, and it's still, I mean, um, uh, update, okay? Totally true. We have some other comments here saying, thank you very much. Thank you for sharing. Ruth Marquez mm -hmm. says, proud of both of you. Excellent webinar. So says Who Ruth. was that? Who was that? Ruth Marquez. Oh, oh. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I know her, of course. <laughs> yes. This thank you, Ruth. Me. Thank you very much. Uh, Mary, uh, thank you very much for sharing with us this information. There, there were so many apps that you were mentioning and websites and that I didn't more. know. And there are more. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I guess That's you had to much. sum up. Uh, so if there are more, please, uh, I mean, like officially, we invite you to come come back one day to complete a second part of the webinar. <laughs> well, and we can talk about Spanish pronunciation for those students who are learning or who are teaching Spanish online and or in, I mean, in this case, Spanish, which is my mother tongue, of course, I'm talking about that because of that. And, and I can teach you a little bit or can help you a little bit with Spanish pronunciation as well. Great, great. So that would be nice. We're very pleased and honored that you decided to accept our invitation. We're very happy that we had a lot of people coming, I mean, to the webinar, making questions and sending you comments and regards. And uh, there is another comment here, said from Gracia, amazing work as always. Mary, proud of you. Good to see you online, Johannes. That's Gracia. Thank you very Thank much, you, Gracia. Gracia. Yeah, okay. and we're Stay happy. Stay safe and healthy. Everybody, take yes. care of yourselves. This is not yeah. a, a joke, okay? Use your mm. masks. And uh, if you can have gloves, please use gloves and uh, take care of yourself. Yeah, yeah. Okay? So this was Mary Allegra. People, thank you for joining us today. Mary, once again, thank you very much. And who is going to launch some information about our next webinar? And that would be it for us. Well, uh, our next webinar is going to be on uh, October the 18th with uh, Professor Shelley Terrell.
So we wow. hope to see you. We hope to see you there. It was a Good pleasure time. for us to have you here. Yes, yeah, Shelly's going to be joining us too. Probably she's going to be talking about Great. something about technology, uh, which is her area of expertise. And then we will be having her too. So Mary, thank you very much again for joining us. And we're looking forward to see you again here at the Autorist Corner. Any other day. My pleasure. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. Bye. Thank you both.